So me and my baby's on our honeymoon. Mm. Oh, your video? Yeah, video. Oh! <laughs> well, no, see how much fun you have, baby. I thought it was a regular shot. Hi! We're having <laughs> such a good time. <laughs> Uh, we have been having a good time. Mm -hmm. She got me hiking. Ooh, out here in Sedona. <laughs> Us and all the folks. Yeah, we're going to do a lot more. Us and all the folks. We out here hiking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we having a ball. It's yes. been nice. This is Elaine Smith and Cedric Anderson. From all outward appearances, they appear to be happy with one another and content. Our previous case dealt with a woman named Wendy Duan, who was a vibrant teacher who devoted her skills to teaching and Elaine Smith built her life out to help aid and teach special needs children much in that same way. Every one of these domestic abuse cases I come across all start out the same. In the beginning, everything is picture perfect. Social media portrays every single one of these cases as the ideal love connection. But the importance of vetting the person you're with has become more than a curiosity. In today's society, it's a need and it can possibly save your life. In these videos, I often talk about wolves in sheep's clothing and how appearances can be so very deceiving. And unfortunately, this case is no different. Elaine Smith was the kind of person you would want your child to be left in the care of. She was kind, she was smart, she was passionate about her role as an educator dealing with special needs children, and she possessed an infinite amount of love. As many of us do, she sought out someone to share her life and passions with, and eventually ended up meeting a man named Cedric Anderson. There are various articles that believe the two met at a church they both attended. Anderson was a man of faith and former pastor sometime in his past, and was looking to move forward with a loving companion much like Elaine was. It was the perfect match. It seemed they had both found what they were looking for. But just weeks into their marriage, Elaine would start to regret the decision to marry. She told her family that the Cedric that they met was nothing like the person she now shared a home with. He had completely changed. It seemed that just weeks into their marriage, he was comfortable showing her who he truly was. Manipulative, overbearing, and insecure. She told her family that he was acting strange and just two months after being married, she wanted out. They had known each other for more than four years, so this sudden change in character was alarming for Elaine. Cedric began accusing his wife of infidelity and even made threats towards her. The threats made weren't elaborated on by authorities and whatever they were, they believe it wasn't enough for Elaine to take them seriously. Still, it was time to go. And so she gathered her things and left the home they shared to go and stay with one of her adult children while she tried to pick up the pieces of her life that had now fallen apart. Cedric, in the meantime, made several attempts to win Elaine back. He tried to convince her to return home and that he could change. But Elaine had seen all the evidence she needed. Her mind was made up. She was done. Elaine had moved on, but Cedric wasn't about to let her go that easily. He was filled with rage, jealousy, and insecurity as a man. And so on Monday, April 10th of 2017, Cedric Anderson arrived at the school of his estranged wife. He can be seen trying to enter another locked door on the outside of the building before entering into the lobby. He told the staff there that he had to drop something off to his wife. The staff, of course, recognized Cedric as the husband of Elaine, but had no understanding of the turbulent relationship between them now or what was about to happen. So they had him sign in, which can be seen on CCTV footage. From there, he enters the door from the lobby into the hallway and makes his way to his wife's classroom. Upon entering, he immediately pulled out a large caliber revolver without uttering a single word and fired 10 shots at his wife, Elaine. In the classroom present, there were two assistant teachers and 15 special needs students that witnessed the entire event unfold. And unfortunately, Two of those students were standing behind Elaine, caught in the crossfire, and were subsequently shot in the onslaught. One of the students that has not been named would go on to survive. The other would be airlifted to a hospital but would ultimately succumb to his wounds. That student's name is Jonathan Martinez. And he didn't deserve to die at the hands of a weak-minded psychopath like Cedric Anderson. 
after shooting and killing his estranged wife, Elaine Smith, Jonathan Martinez, and injuring another child, Cedric then turned the gun on himself and took his own life. It seems that he wanted to be in control to the very end, and in the final moments of his cowardly existence, did what many people do who can't accept rejection or face the consequences of their actions. One of the teachers who heard the shots locked herself inside of an office while calling the police to report what was happening. This was a horrible tragedy that claimed the life of two innocent people and will no doubt leave a third physically and mentally scarred for the rest of their life. Elaine Smith was praised as a passionate soul who was determined to help those students who required special attention to learn basic skills. And she was great at her gift of teaching. In the aftermath, authorities would come to learn that Cedric Anderson had a criminal past with citations that included weapon charges, domestic violence, and possible drug charges. In several of his Facebook posts, he was seen quoting Bible verses and talking about his marriage and how happy they were. The family of Elaine said that he never once publicly displayed any of the traits Elaine accused him of. He was good at hiding who he truly was. I like to think that there's a special place for a selfish psychopath like Cedric Anderson. One that's right in line with the Bible scriptures he so loved to quote. What we now know is that there were two lives cut short all because one man couldn't live with his failures. Those that are left to mourn those lives will now carry with them the gift of the beautiful memories they left behind. May Elaine Smith and Jonathan Martinez rest in eternal peace.